Welcome to the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay. This is your positive path for spiritual living. So this week I heard of a burglar. He had entered his home looking for jewelry, and he was in the master bedroom going over every drawer trying to find the jewelry. And all of a sudden he hears, Jesus is watching you. And he looks around, doesn't see anyone. So he goes on, and again, Jesus is watching you. Hmm. And then he sees a parrot. Did you say that? And the parrot says, I'm only warning you, my name is Moses. A parrot named Moses? Wow. What kind of people would name their parrot Moses? The same kind of people that would name their 150-pound Rottweiler Jesus. (laughs) Oh, well. little humor is good. It gets us out of the head and into the heart. Because today we really want to embody the heart. How many of you were here last week? Whoa, great. Remember that I asked you to? Stretch. And stretch means get out of your structures of knowing. Be willing to be more. Dare to take a risk. Find the creativity, the ingenuity that lies within. And I also asked you to embody one divine quality every day. Did you do that? Yes. Okay. Okay. Were you intentional every morning about awakening the spiritual giant? Okay, that's why today we're going to have another direct experience of awakening the giant. See, awakening the giant, that's the easy part, right? Knowing who we are, that's the easy part. Where it gets tricky is the embodiment, being that that you are on a daily basis when we're at work, when we're with our family, every day when we're driving, when we're stuck in traffic needing to get somewhere, we're in the, we're in the grocery line and it's not moving, when we're getting all these calls from collectors, that's when it gets challenging. But if you recall... What did we say about the Goliaths of the world? They were phenomena. They don't have a separate life. The true power resides within your heart. So this morning, get ready to stretch. And let's all, all, even if you were not here last week, let's have a direct experience of awakening the spiritual giant. So we begin by, first of all, Shake off, shake it off, shake off all the knowing, shake off, remove the cowwebs from the head, take a breath, a deep, deep breath, and say, "Ah, I let go, I let go, I let go, I let go. Now, go into your heart, breathe into your heart, tap into your heart and say, hey, wake up, wake up, wake up, spiritual giant, wake up. I'm ready to embody who I am. And breathe into your heart again and visualize a beautiful, powerful light. And in that light, there is so much passion. And share that light to the person to your right and to your left, behind, in front of you. And let's fill this whole space with light as we lift our energy, lift our vibration. Because yes, we're having a human experience. Yes, we have this amazing body that we can cherish and love and take really good care of, but we're much more than this physical body. We are vibrational beings. We are pure energy. We are consciousness itself having this human experience. So let's breathe into this awareness, expand our sense of self, because we are awareness itself. Ooh, doesn't it feel good to just wake up that giant? Wake up this giant on a Sunday morning. Now, I have a question for you. Are you ready to embody the giant? Yes. yes. 
So yes, it begins with a yes, because we have to be intentional in where our attention is, right? And this spiritual giant is the awakened Christ consciousness. It is the I am. Breathe, I am, I am, I am. That is our true identity, our authentic self. So we take away from the driver's seat the ego. And there's nothing wrong with a healthy ego. I'm talking about the crazy monkeys that want to drive our, our, our car. And put into the driver's seat the giant, the spiritual giant that you are. I am awakening the spiritual giant. Breathe. Take a power pose. Really, really be grounded in who you are. Strengthened from within. This is where we find the freedom. This is where we find the inspiration. This is where we find the grace of God. And it's always one breath to the heart. One breath to the heart. So that there's more room, as Jason was saying in his meditation, the heart does not judge between good and bad. There is room in the heart that welcomes all, that accepts all. And it really begins about self-love and self-acceptance. And so here we discover the divine qualities and we can begin to embody them. Instead of going into, I need love, take a moment to breathe and say, I am love. Feel the love. It's as easy as just taking a breath and just surrendering to this love. Peace, go within. You're never going to get the peace that you're looking for in the outer world. Take a breath and go to the heart until you can come to that place of peace. Know that space in between the words. That space where all the music comes forth, that space where inspiration comes from. And that is by pray, pray, pray. Practice the art of praying, the art of meditation, the art of knowing the silence. I am. Instead of the mind is saying, oh my God, how how am I going to do this? I don't have enough. Lack, lack, worry thoughts, all this, get out of it. Go to the heart, I am abundance. Because the heart knows that right where you are, there's infinite potential. Right where you are, there's infinite divine substance. The heart knows the truth. So breathe into your heart, begin to occupy the heart, begin to gain stability in the heart. And it's it's a new way of being. It's a new way of becoming our authentic self. And then we each have our unique path from the heart because we all have our spiritual gifts and we have what we truly value and we will all have something to contribute once we awaken to the heart space. When you come to know the heart, you have come to know the center of your being, which is actually beyond mind and heart or whatever. The heart is just a metaphor for the very center of your being. And at the center of your being is existence itself, and it will reveal its secrets. When the ocean is calm, when there is calmness in the ocean, there are no waves. So, when the mind is going crazy, this is the waves of the oceans. We can take a breath and go deep into the ocean. Take the attention away from the waves and rest in the ocean. Or, another metaphor is, instead of just being in the valley, go to the mountaintop, where you can have a different view, a different perspective. So, breathe again to the heart. Right there. Right here, right now, I guarantee you that all is well. The only problem are thoughts regarding any situation that you may be holding on to. Take a break from that. Breathe into your heart. And, hey, it's good medicine. When we find the peace of the heart, the mind-body connection begins to work better. We're more at peace. There's less stress. We feel greater. The energy of the universe can begin to flow through us beautifully like a beautiful river. So find that place, that center. 
See, there would be no universe without a ground state. This is what physicists tell us. So when we find the center of the universe within us, we have found freedom itself. We have found infinity. Find your center and you will find the center of the universe, the center of all existence. It's right where you are. We're made in the image and likeness of our creator and it is right here. So waking up the, the sleeping giant is a daily practice. Actually, more than a daily practice, it's a moment-to-moment -moment awareness. And we have to be really intentional because we have to be much more than the conditioned mind. We have to put on the quantum mind, the mind of God, and be able to dance in the field of infinite po possibilities. Because it is all energy, there is no separation, and there is intelligence everywhere. And as we begin to shift our thinking, everything around begins to change. And in order for us to shift our thinking, reside in the heart. Because that way, we don't have to give power to those stressful thoughts, those limiting thoughts. We can breathe here, and then the mind begins to cooperate. And so the mind is here to support the intelligence of the heart love and wisdom together. And so at the driver's seat is the spiritual giant, and we begin to embody it in every action that we take. One practice that I have done for many, 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 many years that I really recommend in my prayer time in the morning, I take a breath, and as I enter my heart, I say, God, think through me. Breathe through me. Speak through me, live through me, act through me on a daily basis. Ask me, and then I am willing to do my best, but I leave the results to you. And that way, wherever I am, I know that God is in charge. This has been my practice for over 20, 30 years of my life. Every morning, as soon as I wake up and I say, thank you, God, I say, God, here I am. Use me. Think, breathe, live through me. So every cell, every atom, every molecule of my body, of this physical body, of this mind, my feelings, everything, I give it to God. I surrender it to God. And it's not a God out there. It is the very God of my being. It is awakening the spiritual giant, the I am consciousness. Let that be in charge. And it feels so much good because I can breathe. I can relax. I know I don't have to carry the weight of the world anymore, I can lay it down. I can lay it down because whatever is mine to do, I will be guided. There is a deep knowing that will live through me and guides me, guides me in every moment. We're all being called to be leaders. There is a spiritual giant in every one of you. And the moment that it is in charge of your life, it is to lead our lives. And then what does it really mean to be a leader of your life? Being the chief executive officer of your life, the CEO of your life. And I came up with an acronym for leader. A leader leads from the heart. Love, listen, let go. L for love, listen, and let go. These are qualities of embodying the giant. Waking up the giant, not enough. We have to have that emotional maturity and spiritual maturity. That is how we are raising our vibration and our consciousness, and that's the only way that we're going to have a world that works for all. Awareness as consciousness itself, the field where everything is lying in. Doing. Where is our actions coming from? Enlightenment. We want to be enlightened leaders, and then we can empower others and take responsibility for our actions, for our lives. See, this is the acronym, but I will not have time to go deeply in all of them. I'm really going to concentrate on the first letter today, which is 
what it really means to begin to embody the heart. It's really tapping into the power of love. So stretch the heart, open the heart, breathe into the heart. And it might feel a little scary because we're so used to have so many walls of protection. Take a risk. Be willing to open the heart to the power of love because when you are opening the heart to the power of love, you are opening the heart to the power of creation because love is the glue that holds all creation together. Love is at the center of the, of the law of attraction. It attracts. It is a vibration. So we want to really bring forth this love. Hey! My heart is stretching. Be willing to stretch that heart. And I'm not talking about just, you know, an emotional love. I can't live without you. No, no, no. I'm talking about a transpersonal love. I'm talking a love that another word for it is God. God is love. When you awaken this power, the spiritual giant feels so good because love just wants to give of itself. And in this love, we're awakening also the power of compassion. Compassion. Empathy. And then we realize that we're all having this human experience. We make, can make room. We can make room for our mistakes. We can make room for the sadness, for the joy, for the anger, because it comes and it goes. And when you're caught up in your story, I can be compassionate, because I've been there too. When you fall, I can give you a hand, because then we're in, all in this together. The power of love can change the world Who was it that said, it's not the love of power, it's the power of love? Who was that that said that? What musician said that? Marley, Bob Marley. Yes. So breathe again into the heart. Because the more, the more we practice, 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 breathing into the heart and be okay just resting here at the very center of our being, we begin to gain stability and it begins to become a more friendly place, a place where, hey, I can rest here because we're so used to, to really reciting in our stories and really getting caught up in the stress or in the drama. Breathe and be in the heart. Know the heart. And then one quality that the heart is really excellent about is the quality of listening. See, if we truly knew how to listen to each other, I believe there would not be so many wars in the world if we learned how to speak and listen and communicate and listen from the heart. But most of the time, we are speaking, and instead of truly listening and hearing, what are we doing? We're already trying to figure out what we're going to say, or the mind is in the past, or the, or the fast, or we're so caught up in doing, 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 doing that we're not truly present. And the greatest gift that we can give anyone is the gift of being present. Just being here and say, I'm here, I'm listening to you. That can change somebody's life. Everyone wants to be seen, to be heard, to be acknowledged. Give somebody the gift of truly being present. And I'm just going to demonstrate a little bit what, what we normally do. John, can you come here a moment? And John is going to, John, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to ask you to just share with me something that really deep from your heart. And, and, what we, and I'm going to kind of do what we normally do. Hi, John. How are you? Uh, hi. hi, Elizabeth. Hi. Th- thank you for taking the time to talk with me. Sure. Um, it seems like I'm, I'm, I'm working harder and harder, and um, I'm just making the same amount of money, and 
everything costs more, and so yeah, it, it's just it's it's very very frustrating. And and then you turn on the television and you see um, you know wars, and you see oh my God, the, look at the, the financial. Time. Um, yeah, what were you saying? Uh, what? Um, no, no, I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay, I'm just um, checking, checking my status. Okay. Uh, I, I, there's a, f- um, a financial uh, things going on in the world and war. And, oh, and I wow. Just Did you see this? There's a tsunami happening somewhere. Um, oh, my God. What, what, yeah? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Do you understand? <laughs> How many times we are out to dinner, three or four of us, Everybody's ordered and everybody is. And we don't take the time to really see each other, to really be with each other. Now, just in a moment, what the difference between of really being present. Thank you, Elizabeth, for taking the time to talk with me. Um, It seems like I'm just working harder and harder. And um, I'm not getting anywhere, and it's really frustrating to me. Thank you. And listening doesn't mean that you have to fix the situation, doesn't have to give advice, just be present. That's what the world needs. Be present for your family, even if your mother tells you the same story 101 times over. Take a breath and be willing to hear it with new ears, being present. So I'm going to invite you this week, let's give technology a break. Can we do that? At least a few hours a day, give technology a break and enter the heart and listen to the technology of spirit because it's going to be calling you to, to be more, to express more, to embody a new dimension of self. And then the other part of L is letting go. The true leader, the spiritual giant, is willing to let go. Let go of my way or no way. Let go of I have to be right. Let go of habits that are no longer serving you. Let go of so many opinions and be open. Be open to the space of infinite possibilities. Let go of attachments and let go go of old resentments and unforgiving thoughts. Did you know that today happens to be International Forgiveness Day? Yeah. So, breathe and let go. Let go. Let go. Let go of anything that is bothering you. Old resentments, past traumas, Anything from the past, let it go. Be in the moment. Occupy the heart. Instead of being with the waves, go to the heart. Forgiveness. It is giving of this love. Being willing to give your heart. Forgiveness heals. And forgiveness begins at the head level. It is at the heart level. It is at the physical level. Forgiveness is like peeling an onion. Just when you think there's nothing else, if you have a stressful thought, if you have a judgment, if you have something that is really bothering you, there's some letting go to do. Yeah. And before you go to sleep at night, an inventory of your day. No, if you were flowing through the day or if you were really caught up, stressed, and and trying to change things, you you know right there and then that the ego took a hold of you. So breathe and come back to the heart and welcome the spiritual giant and pray, 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 surrender to God. Give it to the Holy Spirit. Give everything to the Holy Spirit. 
See, it takes courage to let go of what is hurting you. And it takes courage to let go of your need to be right. And it takes courage to let go of what is holding you back from realizing your dreams. It takes courage to be the authentic self. It takes courage to wake up and embody the spiritual giant. It takes courage to be the greatness that we're meant to be. It takes courage, courage to embody the heart. And there is no other option. If you want to have an authentic life, if you want to things change, it is time to really wake up the giant, embody the giant, live in the heart, love, listen, let go. Have the courage to meet your unhealed wounds, your traumas, meet it, meet it, meet it, because then you can have spiritual maturity, emotional maturity. And then A is for awareness, awareness. Keep the awareness free, free from every conditioning, free from all the habits, and just be in the habit of resting as the open space, the open freedom of intelligence. And then when you are about to take an action, all you're doing Take a moment is, am I reacting or am I responding? Where is my doing coming from? Takes courage to tell the truth. Jesus said, you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. He also said, it was going to take a lot of courage to live in truth. That just didn't make it to the scriptures. But he did say that. But Jesus is the perfect example of an enlightened leader. He led from the heart. He had the courage to do the difficult things. He didn't listen to society and the world or what they was dictating. He listened to his heart. He lived from his I am, from our I am, the one and only I am, the one and only presence that's having this human experience. And take responsibility. Take responsibility for your actions, for your life, for every breath. No more excuses. No more excuses. It is time to embody the spiritual giant in all our actions. And then we can truly anchor heaven on earth. And then love, love, love can be the greatest teacher. And this love is leading us right here because the love is the very center of our hearts and love alone can overcome fear because love surrenders to spirit it is a constant surrendering to the spirit of god that is within us so i'm going to invite you today this morning say yes 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 to live the awakened life yes 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 to embody in every molecule and every atom of your being the spiritual giant that you are and stand up and be all that you were meant to be no more playing at small. Lead from the heart because the world needs leaders like you. So wake up and be all that you were meant to be. I love you. We hope you enjoyed this episode of the Positive Spiritual Living Podcast, brought to you by Unity on the Bay, a spiritual community located in Miami, Florida. Unity on the Bay is supported by the generosity of its community. If you'd like to make a donation or learn more about Unity on the Bay, please visit unityonthebay.org. You can also follow Unity on the Bay on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter for even more positive spiritual inspiration. Until next time, thanks for listening and many blessings. Namaste.